Hello everybody, you're in for a treat today. Today we're going to give you a master class with 12 pro tips on how to keep your shoulder mobile and healthy. Jeremiah, why should anybody even care about their shoulders? Well, your shoulder is one of the most mobile joints in your body. Also, it's one of the joints that most often gets hurt in your body. It's also one of the joints that you use the most and overuse the most. In addition to the fact that it's one of the joints that if it is not positioned well, it can really affect the overall posture of your entire body. So long story short, you're going to want to take advantage of these 12 tips. I'm Dr. Ben Quist. And I'm fitness expert Jeremiah Kruger. Let's get to it. All right, we're going to start by giving you the rules of the road. So there are two different areas that the shoulder commonly becomes tight in. Either the anterior structures or the structures that are in the front of your shoulder, and that's probably the most common area to become tight, and the structures that are in the posterior or back section of your shoulder. So we're going to look at both of those areas separately and give you six different items to look at to fix them on both sides if they are tight. So the first thing we're going to do is test the front and the back of your shoulder to see if it's tight. If we do find that it's tight, or even if it isn't, we're going to give you five different things you can do for the front and the back to either improve your mobility and the health of the shoulder or to maintain it. All right, so our first test here is for the anterior shoulder. Let's talk setup. You're gonna sit down against a flat wall. I want you in a comfortable seated position, probably crisscross applesauce, sliding your butt up against the wall. From there, I want you to get your head touching the wall. You wanna get as much of your back touching the wall as possible for the entirety of this test. Next part, I'm gonna have you bring your elbow out to the side, getting your armpit at 90 degrees for both arms. Now we're starting in this position. I'll call this the baseline. This is 90 degrees. The goal is to rotate your arm up and backwards, externally rotating as far as you possibly can, getting your hands as close to the wall as you can. What we're looking for is at a minimum, trying to get your fingertips to touch the wall. If you can't even get your fingertips with your wrist extended touching the wall, you got some anterior shoulder tightness. If you're able to get your fingertips to touch, you're in a pretty good place. If you're able to get your knuckles to touch, you're crushing it. This is a quick test for whether you are tight on the back of your shoulder. So the muscles like the lats, uh, the teres major, some of the little guys on the back surface oh, that sometimes we get tight in. What you're gonna do is you're going to sit down, crisscross your legs, slide your glutes or buns all the way back against the wall. Shoulders have to be back against the wall as well. And then for the purposes of the test that we're doing today, I want you to flatten and press your lower back into the wall. And what that's gonna do is just gonna stabilize the lats at the bottom part of their insertion so that we can see if they're tight as you raise your arms up. So when you raise your arms up, I want elbows all the way straight, thumbs are pointing up. You're gonna raise the arms up at the shoulder joint, keeping the hands in line with the shoulder. And what we're looking for is that you can easily touch your thumbs to the wall. If you come up and you can't get those thumbs to the wall and you're right here and you start to feel that kind of tight sensation, your lats probably are tight. If you're able to rotate your hands and press your palms directly against the wall, which I don't think Jeremiah could even, this would be like extra credit if you want to do it that way, but, <laughs> but you're pretty good if you could just get those thumbs to the wall. That's what we're looking for. All right, so now that we've tested the front and the back of your shoulder, you may have found that one or the other was tight. Maybe they were both tight. Maybe neither of them were tight. We're going to show you how to fix it on either side. One thing I want to stress, if you did find that you were tight on the front of the shoulder, you're gonna to wanna to spend more time on the moves that loosen up the front of the shoulder that we're gonna show you. If you found that you were tighter on the posterior back side of your shoulder, you obviously are gonna to wanna to spend a little more time on those moves. That makes sense, right? Yes, and if you were tight on neither, these are still beneficial things to do to maintain the non-tightness. All right, let's get to it. Step number one is SMR or self myofascial release. Step number two is passive stretch. Step number three is active assist stretching. Step number four is active no assist range of motion. And then the final step is to actually strength train through that range of motion. Let's we'll start with step number yep. one. Oh, let's do it. All right, here's step number one for the anterior shoulder. We call this self myofascial release. I'm gonna focus on the chest. Now I wanna acknowledge that the muscle is fan shaped so there's a different direction for every part of the fibers and I'd like to track along those different fibers. The first technique here is called flushing. I'm gonna press the ball against my chest. It shouldn't cause pain, but it should be a little bit uncomfortable, maybe on a pain scale up to a four. Now, maybe from four or five different directions, I'm gonna roll the ball, pressing over the fibers, paying attention to where I find some discomfort. I found the most discomfort up here near the top of the shoulder, so I'm gonna hold it there. Now I'm gonna do a neurological trigger point, which means that I'm just gonna find a single spot to hold it on, and I'm gonna to move to the range of motion that I did for that anterior shoulder test, externally rotating my shoulder four to five times as I hold the ball on the point of discomfort. All right, that's SMR for the anterior shoulder. Oh, hey. 
Come on in here. Here's a great SMR technique for the back side of your shoulder or your lats. What you're gonna do is grab a foam roll, you're gonna put it at a 45 degree diagonal, and then lean in or put your weight into that meaty posterior section of your shoulder. And then from there, slowly oscillate back and forth in that meaty section, looking for a little bit of discomfort or stickiness in that area. Once you find that spot, you can kind of stay on there. You only want to press as hard as feeling, again, a four out of 10 pain scale. You don't want to take this up to a nine out of 10 or the muscle simply isn't going to be able to relax. After kind of digging in there for roughly about 30 seconds or so, then we're going to do a neurological trigger point technique of where you just pin into that most painful section and then do some internal external rotation of the shoulder while you're in that tight spot. Give this one a try, it's awesome. All right, so passive stretch for the anterior shoulder. We're gonna use a doorway. This is a callback to one of our older videos where we were stretching our pecs. There's three different angles you might pick from. I'm gonna prioritize the bottom one, which is a position of thumbs at about shoulder height and elbows at about 30 degrees. There are different angles where you might go up to 90 and up higher. All this does is bias different parts of your chest. I wanna bias the clavicular head, the top part here. So thumbs at shoulder height, elbows at 30 degrees. I raise one leg and let it fall forward, pulling me forward into a big stretch. I might hold this position for 30 to 60 seconds. If that becomes too intense, maybe I'll rest for a moment, 15 seconds in, and then repeat that so I get a total time under stretch of about one minute. Here's one of my favorite passive range of motion stretches for the lats. This is an area that I personally have been tightened in the past, and this is one of the techniques that I use almost on a daily basis to make sure that I'm not tight anymore. Really easy one to do. You wanna grab some light dumbbells, typically in the range of anywhere from one to three pounds for someone who's a little more petite, someone who has a little more muscle mass like myself, anywhere from five to 10 pounds should be good. You're gonna lay back on the bench and then tuck your pelvis, pushing your back down against the bench, press your arms straight up, almost like you're doing a chest press position, and then lay the arms backwards, keeping the hands in line with the shoulders all the way back until you start to feel that stretch. And then just relax into that nice passive stretch position. I typically hold my passive stretches from anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds, depending on how tight I feel. It feels good. All right, we're gonna be doing an active assist front of the shoulder opener or pec stretch. What we're gonna do first is set our band up at about 45 degree angle at about chest height. So the band should be set up so that it's basically like chest or shoulder height on an angle from the body. Then from there, you're gonna lift your hand off the ground in the band and you're gonna rotate back through your body coming all the way back down, bringing that hand towards the back hip on, on that side. As you're going through, through that bottom half of the motion, you're getting a lot of pec stretch. As you come up into this part of the motion, you are even stretching up into the, the lats and the teres major and things of that nature. But it's a really, really cool assisted stretch in that you're gonna get a lot more height than you'd be able to do if you didn't have that band assisting you up. One thing to note on this is that you want to keep your chest down when you're doing this. So you don't wanna have the band rotate you off the floor, which it might, and sometimes stabilizing with your hand on the side while you're doing it is a big help to make sure that doesn't happen. Typically, you wanna scour through that range of motion, maybe like five to 10 times, just to kinda of <laughs> loosen that area up. Five to 10? Five to 10. Here's an active assist stretch that I really like for the posterior part or backside of your shoulder, which typically is gonna be like your lat or teres major. What you wanna do is grab a light flat band, it doesn't need to be too heavy, and you wanna position the line of attachment for the flat band a little bit below the height of your head. Then, pop into the band, taking your hands about shoulder width apart, step forward in a staggered stance, bring the elbows in, and then from here, we're gonna push up into what kind of would be a lat stretch, and the band is gonna assist and pull you backward even further. Hold there for about three to five seconds, then bend your elbows to take the pressure off of that, that backside of your shoulder, then come forward a little bit more. Now push back up again, press into it, nice straight position through the body, keep your rib tips down, keep your abs engaged, holding, oh, that feels good, oh yeah, oh, it feels good. All right, and typically I do anywhere from five to 10 reps of that, depending on how tight I'm feeling that day. 
All right, so step number four here. This is called a handcuff. This is active, no assist range of motion for the anterior shoulder. Set up position. I like to lie down with my head resting against the floor. I'll start with the handcuff position of hands behind my head. I'm gonna pull my elbows apart as far from the floor as I can and then keep that elevation as far as I possibly can back to palms up above my butt, getting my hands as far from my butt as I can, actively squeezing the shoulder blades together, keeping my arms as far from the floor as I can throughout the entire range of motion. If you go slow and control through this exercise, 10 reps is a great goal because that is a very hard thing to do. All right. So now that you've already loosened up the lat with some SMR techniques, you've passively stretched it, you've actively assisted stretched it, we are now gonna just do some active range of motion. And one of Jeremiah and I's favorite different moves to do for active range of motion, really working kind of that, that extension position at your shoulder is the scarecrow. It is one of the hardest moves to do appropriately because most people just do not have the range of motion to do it right. And that's why doing those other techniques before getting to this move is so effective. So let's go through it really quickly. Typically, you want to set your bench up to roughly about 45 degrees. You're going to lay forward. You're going to put your forehead on the bench. Sometimes it's nice to have a little towel roll here or something to keep your neck in a neutral position. If not, not that big of a deal. Then from there, rotate your hands back into that 90-90 position at the shoulder. And then from there, you're going to push your arms straight forward, all the way straight over your head, and then pull them back. If you're doing this correctly, you should feel an enormous amount of muscle contraction happening uh, on the posterior side of your shoulder. So your rear delt should be firing up, your lats should be firing, your toes minor, uh, your lower trapezius, all those muscle groups are gonna be contracting like mad to kind of pull back and put you in the right position. Typically you wanna do that for 10 or 12 reps. All right, so step five for the anterior shoulder here is resistance training through a full range of motion. I'm picking a chest fly, a great exercise. Get yourself seated on a bench. I like to make sure that my lower back is flush against the bench. If you have shorter legs than me and maybe your feet don't touch the floor, I'd place them up top. From here, give your elbows a gentle bend and lock out that position. And I'm gonna lower the dumbbells down about as far as I can maintain and then bring them back up and together. This is a very intense stretch, especially with weight. So for those of you who are not comfortable down here, maybe you don't want to come down this far. It's still a stretch, so on a pain scale, you want to keep it somewhere near a four. That way you don't overdo it and stretch yourself into a position you don't yet own. Weight-wise, the potential is unlimited. Rep-wise, if you're really focused on a range of motion, I'd keep it somewhere near 10 reps with a focus of the stretch position at the bottom, maybe pausing two to three seconds at the bottom of every single rep. Oh, hey there. Uh, are you ready for the last move for the posterior part of your shoulder? What you're gonna do now is you're going to actually take a resistance training move through its full range of motion to get a stretch at the bottom to again reinforce that extra mobility that you've created in that area. The move that we're gonna be using is uh, one of our favorites, which is a dumbbell pullover. What we're gonna do is grab your weight. You definitely want your head supported on the bench so your neck is in a neutral position. You start with the weight directly over the top of your chest. Hips are bridged up to start. And you're gonna slowly lower the weight back over the top of your head, and I can feel that stretch immediately coming into that posterior part of my shoulder. At the bottom part of the move, you may want to play around with releasing, going into an extended position at that low back, and then tucking back into a posterior tilt and raising the weight back up. And that just kind of accentuates the stretch even a little bit more. So again, slow controlled reps all the way down, stretch, 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 stretch then release at the pelvis, let the stretch get even a little more intense, then tuck at the pelvis, raise the weight back up, all the way to the top, completing somewhere in the 10 to 15 rep range on that move. Okay, so to, to wrap up this episode, the five different techniques that we showed you after the tests that we did for anterior and posterior shoulder, those are really meant to be done in order. So you really wanna kind of follow along. There's a method to our madness and how we sequence those. As far as where to put them in your life, like when would you do that scheduling. stuff? Scheduling. You know, I would recommend if you're gonna be doing a day that's very posterior heavy, meaning a lot of pulling, hinging, that kind of stuff, do the posterior techniques. They work out great as a warm up. If you're gonna be doing a day that is very chest heavy, very anterior focused or dominant, then it makes sense to do those anterior techniques as your warm up. So that's one really easy way to incorporate them. Um, what other thoughts do you have? Truthfully, I think the workout could be a good one of its own. You're just doing that as a workout and you end with those two exercises, the pullover and the chest fly. That is a great full upper body workout right there. 
Yeah, just to segue off what we just said, you know, it could almost be on a day where you didn't really want to go that heavy, but you mm -hmm. know you need to be working on your mobility and your range of motion. You know, it'd be a great kind of lower level workout or kind of slightly more of a recovery day to do something of, of that nature as a standalone workout where you just go through all five of the sequences for each area just to really get that upper body feeling great. I will say that if this is effective for you and that it increases your range of motion, you're gonna be sore in new ways than you may, may never have been before. So it might still feel like a pretty intense workout at least the next day. One other thing to note with some of these different techniques, maybe some of them you haven't done before, like the active assist range of motion techniques, some of them are very, very effective. And even though they don't look like you're doing much, they are incredibly challenging. It feels like you're doing something. You, you really do. So, uh, or some of the range of motion exercises, uh, like the handcuff drill or the scarecrow. Those are two of the exercises that I see performed with terrible form many times. And people are like, oh, it's so easy, it's so easy. Well, how about we fix these five different things and actually get you doing it right? And then it really opens your eyes to how difficult those movements really are. And many times how you need the prep work even to get into the proper position to do them. You know, so. Every time I have a client do one of those movements, I say you're about to get humbled. And every time they're like, <laughs> two and a half pounds is this heavy or my hands are that heavy? <laughs> yeah. Right, totally. So next week we're gonna be doing the same thing on the front and the back of your hip so look forward to that uh please subscribe to our channel we love it guys thank you so much for how many comments you've been leaving lately uh that's been great to, to hear that you're enjoying the videos and getting some some benefit out of them um like the video share it with friends subscribe whatever floats your boat see you later see ya